Hi, I'm Eve Fleischman, Certified Yoga Therapist, and today I'll be leading you through a guided meditation using movement, sound, and visualization with the breath so that we can connect better to our own bodies, to our personal energy, and to the earth and the energy of all things. The focal point of today's meditation is an iconic piece of art now over 150 years old. A painting by Thomas Moran titled The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. This painting's history is closely tied to Yellowstone becoming the first national park in the United States in 1872. Now this canyon has been forming and constantly changing for thousands of years. Thomas Moran was the guest artist on a government-sponsored expedition in 1871, and he was asked to capture what he saw through sketches and paintings. This one is perhaps his most famous work. He referred to this as the big picture. And of course, this painting is very large. It's seven feet by 12 feet. But the big picture is also a very apt description of what we see here, this connection of earth and sky. And as you continue to look at the painting, I wanna share the dictionary definition of the word energy. Energy can be neither created nor destroyed, but only changed from one form to another. Now, when I look at this painting, I see movement of energy represented in the five elements. We have earth with the rocks and the canyon itself. We have water with the waterfall and the river snaking through the canyon. We have fire represented in the sunlight hitting the canyon walls and the hydrothermal effects. We see the geysers there in the distance. And we also have air and space in the steam and the mist rising, as well as the clouds in the sky. Now let's take a closer look and see what the canyon looks like today. You'll notice these tiny trees growing along the canyon wall. Now, of course, these trees aren't really tiny, but they prove the scale and the vastness of the canyon itself. And the color of the canyon wall is a result of these hydrothermal effects, releasing heat and chemicals that make the rock these shades of yellow, red, and brown. So you see the waterfall. You may recall in looking at the painting or perhaps when you've seen a waterfall on your own sometime from a distance, it appears that it is still, that it's static. But when you get up closer, you can see the movement of the water. Even though it's moving at a very rapid pace, when we look at a waterfall up close, it appears to be flowing in slow motion. That's how our eyes can keep up with that rapid movement. So this makes me think of harnessing power and energy. Like an athlete or a musician at the top of their game, when they talk about their performance as being in the zone, things seem to stand still or move in slow motion, even though what they're doing is happening quite rapidly. So now let's move to a different view of the canyon. We're in the same area, but this time we're shifting our focus to the side of that waterfall. Now we see that mist rising, creating a rainbow on the canyon wall. Moran called Yellowstone a country bespattered by rainbows. Now let's take a closer look at the hydrothermals. Here we see a geyser. Remember that all of Yellowstone is a volcanic site and it is home to half of all the geysers in the world. And now we see an example of mud pots, like a vat of bubbling mud that fire element coming up through the surface. All these scenes make me think of that change of energy from one form to another. And in yoga philosophy, we have this concept of moving from the gross to the subtle, the earthly plane to the heavenly plane. It's also called the physical body to the subtle body. So I wanna explain a little bit more about what that means in yoga philosophy when we say gross to the subtle. Here's an example. Your guts, your actual guts, your intestines are a part of your physical body. Whereas your gut feeling, your intuition, your energy are a part of your subtle body. So these are things that may not show up on an MRI, but they are definitely real and a part of us. So one of the ways we look at this movement of gross to subtle in yoga is using the chakra model. Now this word chakra, you may have also heard it pronounced with a soft CH here in the West. And it's a Sanskrit word that means wheel. 
So we can think of these wheels of energy moving up through the central channel, building on each other. And these chakras are linked to the elements. So let's do an exercise here using the sense of touch and we'll be moving from root to crown. I want you to bring your hands here at the top of your thighs to represent root. So now we move from earth into water with our hands below the navel. And then we move from water into fire with our hands here at the belly. And now fire into air with our hands at the area of the heart and the lungs and then air into space with our hands at the throat. And now when we get higher, we move beyond the elements. So we move up here to the eyebrow center, also known as the third eye, and this represents consciousness. And then we move to the crown of the head, and this area represents divine energy, connecting that physical realm to the subtle realm. All right, we're gonna do a few more gentle movements, focusing on bringing that energy up. And I'm gonna to come to standing, but you're welcome to do this seated and just do the arm movements, or you can just visualize that you're doing them. Okay, let's do Tadasana pose. That means mountain pose. The first thing we wanna do is look down at our feet and stand with your feet femur width distance apart. Now, if you're seated, it's the same thing. You can put your feet and your knees femur width distance apart. This stacks our joints, gets our skeleton into alignment. Now, we will be thinking about that mountain, that grounded to the earth feeling as we do this pose, and we'll have three different arm positions. So here we have tall mountain, and then here is taller mountain, and then tallest mountain. Now, if you wanna make this a more challenging balance pose, you could also lift your heels a little bit higher with the arm movements. And we'll be pausing with the breath as we go up. All right, so here we go. Inhale, tall mountain, and pause. Inhale, taller mountain, and pause. Inhale, tallest mountain, and then let's sigh on the way down. Ha. Good, let's try this a few more times. Inhale, tall mountain, and pause. Inhale, taller mountain, and pause. Inhale, tallest mountain, and sigh, ha. And one more time. Inhale, tall mountain. Inhale, taller mountain. Inhale, tallest mountain, ha. Good. Now we'll move into Vrikshasana, that's tree pose. Now, we're doing a variation on tree, which involves being grounded in the lower limbs while we add a little bit of movement, a little bit of energy in the upper limbs. So I'd like for you to shift your weight into one leg by lifting the opposite heel. And now if it feels okay, bring that knee out to the side. And notice your hip flexors here in the front of the body. Notice your glutes in the back body. We want to engage those glutes to help us feel more stable. And then we will start to undulate the arms. You may need to tuck your chin back so that your head feels balanced on top of your spine. And you want to fix your gaze on a non-moving spot perhaps along the floor at a distance. And remember to breathe. And then let's come back to both feet and we'll get ready to do this on the other side. We shift into the other leg and then turning the knee out to the side if that feels okay for your hip. Notice your hip flexors here in the front of the body, engaging the glutes, the back body. And then we start to undulate the arms. Again, check the placement of your head. You may need to tuck your chin back a little bit, fixing your gaze on a non-moving spot out in front of you. And don't forget to breathe.
And now coming back to center, I'd like for you to bring your hands on top of your head, interlocking your fingers. Now applying this gentle pressure helps to relieve tension in the head, the face, the eyes, the jaw, and the neck. And it helps to free up the throat. So let's do that audible sigh once more with each exhale. Ha. 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 And then go ahead and bring your arms back down. All right, we did some grounding poses here with the mountain, the tree. Now let's move into a little bit more flow, bringing back in that image of the river snaking through the canyon. We'll do what I call a little song and dance. Now I wanna teach you the dance moves first. So we'll start with our arms crossed low at the waist. We're gonna circle those arms up and down and you can wiggle your fingers at the same time. And we might think of that connection of earth and sky. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good, then we'll do figure eight. So I'm making an eight shape with one arm and then the other as I step side to side. We could think about that river flowing through the canyon. And then we'll do a diagonal arm reach. And maybe we bring to mind the waterfall or a rainfall. And next, we will step, step in place to return to earth. And we'll do what I call the anchor move. So as you inhale, you lunge to one side and the other leg is the anchor. And as you exhale, you bring it back to center. And then we do the same thing on the other side. Inhale, lunge, and exhale back. Now we'll add the arms. Inhale, lunge, exhale back. Inhale, lunge, exhale back. And then we'll push to the side, two-step clap. Push, push, clap, push, push, clap. And then we'll end with a free swim. This is where you can use your own creative energy, any kind of swimming that you like. You could do breaststroke, backstroke, crawl, whatever you feel like doing in that moment. All right. Now I'm gonna sing a song for you that I wrote with a friend of mine. It's called, Not a Day Goes By. And I wanna highlight the first two lines. The water goes where it flows most easily. And I can see deep inside of me a well of energy. All right, here we go. inside of me a well of energy like an autumn rainfall through the whispering trees I float along the shifting breeze not a day goes by I don't face a change as much as I Try to stem the tide Not a day goes by I don't rearrange All the rooted anchors in my life Not a day goes by When there's a rock That blocks my I'm not sure where I should turn It's okay I'll find my way Not a day goes by I don't face a change As much as I try to stem the tide
Now, as we come back to the seated position, see if you can feel that movement of energy with that flow. Your blood circulating throughout your body. I'd like to do a more subtle action with the lymphatic system now. We have twice as much lymph as blood in our bodies. And sometimes the movement of lymph is described as rivers moving throughout our bodies to help support the immune system. So I'd like for you to bring your hands to the back of your head. Here at the base of your skull, I want you to bring your fingertips along that area known as the occipital ridge. This is an arc. We could think of the arc of the rainbow as we move our fingers along this ridge. And now bringing your fingertips to either side of your cervical spine, let's just gently rub our fingers down the back of the neck. Now we can bring back that image of the waterfall. Gently encouraging lymph to move back from the head into the lymph ducts towards the heart. Now bring your hands back down to rest into your lap. We're going to move back to the painting itself and look for some smaller details that we may have missed. If we look more to the foreground, you may see some human figures and their horses. And then even closer to the front, you might notice a fallen deer or perhaps an elk. Then farther to the left in the shadows, see if you can see the bear. It could be a black bear or a grizzly bear. Both types live in Yellowstone. And now turn your attention to the top right. We see a bird hovering in the sky. This is probably an osprey, maybe an eagle. Imagine that bird soaring way up high in the heavens, honing in on all that activity down below in the canyon. Once more, bring your attention to the river down in the canyon, the waterfall, the mist rising. We can think of the waterfall being like that central channel in the body. The waterfall like our breath, moving in and down with each inhale, and then moving up and out with each exhale, like the mist rising. Now go ahead and close your eyes keeping that image of the painting in your mind. We'll start to deepen the breath. And notice where you feel movement in your torso as you breathe. As you inhale, you may notice your chest and your abdomen rising. And as you exhale, you may notice a slight contraction as your navel falls back towards your spine. Stay with this wave-like motion of the breath. Now bring your attention back to the crown of the head, this area that represents divine energy. It's called the gateway. We can think of it as that gateway between the earth and the sky. Now imagine you have a funnel there at the top of the head. And as you inhale, draw that breath in through the funnel, through the crown of the head, down through that central channel, all the way to the root there at the pelvic floor. And as you exhale, the breath comes back up and out through that central channel, up through the crown of the head, the funnel releasing into the atmosphere. Inhale down through that funnel, through the central channel, all the way to the root and pause there for a moment. And as you exhale, breath comes back up the central channel, up through the crown of the head. Let's stay with this image for several more deep breaths. Wow, 
by harnessing our personal energy, our power, we come closer to our true nature. On your next inhale, bring your palms together at heart center. May we take with us this awareness of our own personal energy, as well as our connection to earth and sky, to all beings and the universe. Inhale, open your eyes. Thank you.